Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Gann for Original Sound Version. Um, I'm here to show off today, dun da da dun, the Final Fantasy XIII Original Soundtrack Limited Edition. Uh, now, if you click right here, um, you're going to find uh, Jason Napolitano's video for the regular edition of the soundtrack. Um, there are differences between the two versions. Um, I'll be noting them as I go through, as Jason did. You should watch both videos if you want to get a feeling for the difference between the two videos. Um, so, without further ado, let's bust this puppy open. Now, the box I'm opening, this is just, um, this isn't even that decorative of a box. It's white and purely utilitarian. The front is the only thing that has anything on it. The back and the sides are nothing. Um, the first thing we see here is a book. This is the Final Fantasy XIII visual book. Um, something similar to it is in the regular edition. This one has the same liner notes, uh, composer, producer, director, liner notes in it. It has more art and obviously it's larger. Um, most of the art is CG art. Um, there's some in-game shots some uh, vertical style pictures um, but along with the CG there is some uh, Yoshitaka Amano artwork um, this is probably my favorite image in the book this is a uh, lightning uh, done by Yoshitaka Amano I really really like his art style some people don't and it's fine that they don't um, here's another Amano art this is lightning with the crew um, the playable characters from 13 um, and in the back, and Jason showed this off, there is a humongous credits list. Well over a hundred people worked on this soundtrack between musicians, uh, composers, arrangers, performers, as well as engineers, um, and people who designed this packaging and all the producers and stuff, so uh, pretty big list. This is the other uh, rather unique thing about the limited edition. This is the Final Fantasy XIII Episode Zero Promise. Story Zero One Encounter. Uh, it's a radio drama album. If you don't know what a drama album is, basically, uh, it's like before we had TV in America, you would listen to like audio radio programs. Um, I still listen to them on Prairie Home Companion on NPR. Um, but if you don't speak Japanese, the CD is kind of worthless to you. It's 20 minutes long, seven tracks, um, and other than the disc itself, the book, which is a listed as a scenario book. It's actually the entire script um, done manga style, back to front, um, right page and then left page, and then you read right to left and then top to bottom. Um, and it's everything everyone says across the 20 minute CD. Um, so again, unless you speak Japanese, you're not missing out on a whole lot. You're missing out on a larger box with a larger art book. Um, and then otherwise, it's almost entirely the same. Um, the digipack comes in this sleek plastic cover, which I can remove to find this front, side, back. Hey, she's on a horse. Is it Odin? I don't know. Um, track list here. Um, the track list is in Japanese and English entirely. Not everything comes out entirely uh, right. Um, for example, right here, um, in Japanese, on disc 4 track 4, it says, Parsu, uh, de choko, uh, yeah, chokobo, and the de is actually written de, and this is, uh, typical, uh, of the chokobo tracks, waltz de chokobo, electric de chokobo. Um, they didn't translate it as Pulse de Chocobo, they translate it as Chocobos of Pulse. Now there's a pun there because the world of this game is Pulse, so it works, but um, still. Uh, there, someone, I think, could probably do a better or more accurate Japanese track list. That wasn't even the best example of discrepancies. Now the four discs, um, if you look through, the difference between the regular and limited edition here is there's um, art on each disc, character art. Um, behind each disc, and this is really interesting, um, along with more art, there's words. And um, these words, and this is hard to see because you got to get through plastic to see it, um, the 
words are lyrics to songs that are on the disc. Um, there's probably more vocals on this than any other Final Fantasy. I shouldn't even say probably. There are. Um, there's there's at least ten lyrical pieces and more vocal performances that are non-lyrical scattered throughout. Um, some are in English, some are in Japanese, some are in Latin, or at least some sort of fake equivalent of Latin. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the whole thing. Um, this limited edition, the catalog number is completely different. It's 78 through 82, um, SQEX10178 through 82. Then the regular edition is 83 through 86. Again, the fifth disc is the drama album. And... It's $15 more. It, this was about $55. The original was, uh, the regular edition was $40. Um, and just some quick notes about this. The Final Fantasy XII soundtrack and many before it, they would advertise these limited editions and they'd have this grandiose packaging, all sorts of, you know, posters and stuff. But, um, they, they overprinted them, and it got to the point where the regular edition was actually the rare edition. You couldn't you couldn't find it anywhere because they made too many of the limited. In fact, I think the limited edition of FF12 soundtrack is still at GameMusic.com on clearance for like $13. Um, whereas this, apparently, this limited edition is already out of stock at PlayAsia and a couple of other sites. So hopefully Square Enix learned their lesson and the regular edition will actually be the regular edition. And again, if you're thinking, oh, I really want the limited edition and it's too late, and I don't know if it's too late, but, you know, assuming it is, don't worry about it. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably don't even know Japanese, and so, you know, screw the drama disc, just get the regular edition. Um, I like having the limited edition, but, you know, whatever, it's all good. Um, this video is now over seven minutes long, and I apologize for that. Um, again, my name is Patrick Gann, representing Original Sound Version. Thanks for watching.